In the Destiny 2 expansion, Beyond Light, the majority of the story plays out on Europa, where the ruins of an old human colony once stood. In the game, Europa is depicted as a cold, icy world, and it hasn't just featured in the Destiny series. Europa has also featured as a location in Call of Duty, Battlezone and Descent, among many other references in games and entertainment. These fictional representations are, of course, based on a real place. Europa is one of four Galilean moons of Jupiter, which have played a key role in our understanding of the mechanics of the solar system since they were first discovered in the 17th century. But of these four moons, it is Europa which boasts the most promising potential for future solar system exploration and the search for another life source in our planetary backyard. Today, we'll be taking a look at just why this cold, distant moon is so fascinating and perplexing as we peel back the layers to uncover its astonishing properties. Europa is one of four large moons that were discovered around Jupiter in 1610 by Galileo Galilei. If you've watched this series before, then you may recall that planets in the solar system tend to be named after Roman deities, whereas their moons are usually named after the Greek equivalent of some relevant mythological figure. As Jupiter is the Roman equivalent of the Greek god Zeus, these four satellites are named after the lovers of Zeus. Europa is one such lover, the Phoenician mother of King Minos of Crete. And as it turns out, naming Europa after a mother figure may be right on the money, as we are now beginning to understand some of its own life-bearing properties. With a diameter of about 3,100 kilometers, it is the smallest of the four large Galilean moons and sixth largest overall moon in the solar system. At about nine-tenths of the diameter of Earth's moon, it would appear smaller in the night sky, but far more luminous. Europa is five times as reflective as our moon, thanks to one of its most distinctive features, a global frozen surface covering of water ice. Europa is composed of mostly silicate rock and ice, similar to the terrestrial planets, and so while it is the smallest of Jupiter's four large moons, its mass exceeds that of Neptune's moon Triton and all the other moons smaller than it in the solar system combined. This composition indicates that Europa likely formed alongside Jupiter and the rest of the solar system around 4.5 billion years ago, whereas infant planets accumulate mass and build up material via accretion around a star, moons that are not formed by planetary impacts can grow in a similar way around their planet through the process of co-accretion. So Europa is most likely to be billions of years old, yet in comparison its surface appears to be much younger between 60 and 180 million years old. We can estimate the age of a celestial object's surface by looking at the number of impact craters it has. Based on what we know about asteroid impact probability in our solar system, large impact craters should form, on average, about every 4 million years. So a cratered world implies an old surface. But Europa's surface is relatively devoid of craters, and this underdensity, when compared with its age, is testament to the fact that the surface is constantly changing and being reshaped. Europa has the smoothest surface of any known body in the solar system, thanks to its all-encapsulating shell of ice, and this shell is constantly thawing and refreezing. The Jovian system is much further from the Sun than the Earth, more than five times further. Thus, sunlight out here is about 25 times fainter than on Earth leading to freezing surface temperatures of about minus 160 Celsius at the equator and minus 220 Celsius at the poles. These temperatures have turned the ice shell as hard as rock. The moon has a very thin atmosphere of oxygen, meaning little to no heat hitting the moon is retained and the surface receives next to no protection from the intense radiation from the parent planet, Jupiter. The surface radiation on Europa is about 540 REM per day, which is enough to cause serious illness and death in most people after less than 24 hours of exposure. One of the downsides of having a massive particle accelerating chemical reaction as your next door neighbour. One of the most striking features of the European surface is that the ice shell is crossed and intersected by long dark ridges and cracks called lineae. There is no scientifically agreed hypothesis as to how these formed, but it is probably to do with glacial activity within the ice. While ice glaciers appear still, they flow over thousands of years, and it is the same on Europa. The vast icy subs of the European ice sheet are analogous to tectonic plates on Earth, albeit being powered by different forces. 
but what this means is that over time, the surface ice flows, shifts and rotates within the ice sheet and on the surface, and we can see evidence of this all over the face of the moon. Spots of warmer ice rise to the surface like convection currents, and large plains form in bands where slabs have separated, and glacial ice has oozed out like magma. Furthermore, while we've yet to observe them up close, there is radar and thermal data to suggest that the surface is lined with icy upward-facing spikes called penitentes. These are formed by sunlight radiating down onto the surface ice and they are estimated to be up to 15 meters high, which presents a pretty major obstacle for any surface landing mission. In addition to geological features, the moon is also lined with horizontal fractures and cracks due to the immense power of Jupiter's gravity tugging on the ice sheet. This influence is most observable in the aptly named Chaos Terrains. Europa's surface has many of these terrains, where iceberg-like blocks have translated and moved around across expanses as large as a city, like this one, Konamara Chaos. As areas of convecting ice rise, the influence of Jupiter's tidal gravitational forces collects within, causing more friction and thus more melting within the plane, leading to a complete free-for-all of shifting icebergs which jostle each other and create jagged patterns and features. But not every shifting piece of ice can be explained by Jupiter's gravity alone. Some portions of the crust appear to have shifted and rotated to a degree that would be impossible were the crust attached to a solid mantle layer below the surface. It's as if the surface is floating on a liquid or icy layer just below the shell. So just what is Europa hiding below its global ice covering? Well, our first clue to this mystery came when we finally visited the moon up close. The Jovian satellites have been the subject of past, present and future missions. They were the first moons beyond our own ever to be discovered, and since then we have managed to fly by Europa no less than five times. The first two flybys were Pioneers 10 and 11 in 1973 and 1974. While they didn't provide much up-close detail, they took the first pictures of the distant moon and sent them back to Earth. And then, in 1979, Voyagers 1 and 2 flew by and took much more detailed pictures, including the first pictures of its frozen surface. Following this discovery, scientists speculated over the possibility of an ocean or liquid layer beneath the crust, but it was the Galileo spacecraft which really began to unravel the mystery, with most of what we currently know and predict about Europa coming from this mission. The Galileo spacecraft explored the Jupiter system between 1995 and 2003, making about a dozen flybys of Europa in the process. And during this observation, the instruments detected a magnetic field created by the Moon. This wouldn't have been a wholly surprising discovery, but then on another flyby, the field appeared to have shifted. Magnetic fields don't tend to change so radically this fast, and so there must have been another explanation. Scientists struggled to explain this anomaly at first, but we now know that Europa is behaving like a conductor, implying a special type of induced magnetic field is being created. The most likely cause for this is a deep layer of electrically conductive fluid in the shallow subsurface of the Moon, below the crust, but above the mantle and core. Based on Europa's water ice surface, scientists now believe that this could be an indication that Europa has a layer of salty liquid water hidden beneath its crust, a subsurface ocean. This hypothesis was strengthened further, as analysis now suggests that the Galileo spacecraft flew through a plume of water-rich material which was erupting from the hypothesized sea below, the same phenomenon that occurs on Saturn's moon of Enceladus thanks to cryovolcanic activity. Ever since this discovery, scientists have been working for almost 20 years to send a more sophisticated craft to Europa to find another one of these plumes and fly through it to collect samples. But during this time, scientists have regularly used the Hubble telescope to observe the Moon, and in 2016, it detected more evidence of water-rich plumes erupting near the South Pole, even more evidence to weigh in favour of the ocean's existence. It is this ocean that makes Europa so intriguing to study, as there are a number of different lines of evidence to suggest its existence, and the signs generally point towards a promising potential for habitability. Many of the solar system's moons are thought to be hiding subsurface oceans beneath their crust, but what is particularly exciting about Europa's ocean is that it is probably salty water, like oceans on Earth today, 
just tucked under the ice shell of a moon millions of kilometres away. This speculated ocean layer sits between the outer ice shell, which is estimated to be between 15 to 25 kilometres thick, and the rocky mantle. Based on our current models of moons and geology, we estimate that this liquid layer, or at least part liquid layer, could be up to 100 kilometres thick, several times deeper than all of the oceans on Earth. Because this ocean likely extends across the entire moon, we predict that it contains between twice and three times the amount of water of the Earth's oceans combined, despite the moon being only a quarter of the size. You might be wondering how this ocean can remain in liquid form when the outer shell is frozen solid. Well, in order for this to be the case, there would need to be a heat source of some kind keeping the ocean warmer than the outer layer. It is possible that Europa may have some degree of radioactive decay in its interior, which is the same phenomenon that powers convection currents on Earth. This would heat the moon's interior, keeping the ocean in liquid form, and would probably cause some degree of volcanic activity on the sea floor, a likely requirement for life as we know it. But even if there is no radioactive decay happening at the core, the oceans could still remain liquid because there is another, stronger heat source in action as well, and it is being driven from above by the colossal power of Jupiter's influence. Jupiter is a massive ball of gas and radiation, more than twice the mass of all the other planets and moons in the solar system combined. Thus, it exerts a tremendous force on its satellites, keeping them bound into strict circular orbits. However, the three innermost of the Jovian satellites are also exerting a force on each other. Io, Europa and Ganymede circle Jupiter in an orbital resonance. Like clockwork, for every one orbit of Ganymede, Europa orbits twice and Io four times, and this resonance means that sometimes the planets align. Io and Europa align the most frequently, coming within a relatively short distance of each other, which pulls them out of their circular orbit and into a slightly more eccentric elliptical orbit. And so, as the Moon orbits Jupiter, the influence from the parent planet changes as the Moon elongates towards and away from the planet. Europa is tidally locked, meaning it orbits as fast as it rotates, about once every three and a half days, and so one side is always facing the planet, meaning the Moon remains in a rigid position while the gravity from Jupiter changes. When the Moon is closest to Jupiter, the Moon is stretched out more, but when it gets further away, it contracts. This is one of the reasons we see fractures across the European surface. The effects of Jupiter's gravity are most felt on Io, a scorched volcanic wasteland and the innermost of the large moons. Europa is further away from Jupiter, so the effects aren't as extreme, but this does cause some degree of effect, called tidal flexing. The surface and interior of the moon are being tugged by Jupiter, flexing the ice crust by about 30 metres, generating heat further down, far greater than anything produced by radioactive decay. This heat source is the thing that we think is keeping the subsurface oceans on Europa temperate. We don't know the full extent of this tidal flexing, and we don't know where it is either. On the one hand, the majority of its effects could occur within the ice shell, which would keep the ocean in liquid form, but wouldn't be enough for volcanism and hydrothermal activity on the sea floor. On the other hand, the majority of this tidal flexing could be felt in the inner rocky mantle of the moon which would heat the interior, probably allowing for geological activity, making it a much more familiar environment to the one we know on Earth. It's worth mentioning that one possible counter-argument against the ocean hypothesis is that the layer could be a slab of warm convecting ice. However, many scientists agree that the tidal gravitational forces from Jupiter, coupled with numerous other lines of evidence, make it much more likely that this ocean exists. So the next question is obvious, could anything live in it? Well, we know that life requires three things, an energy or heat source, a source of chemical compounds, and a solvent to mix things in chemical reactions, such as water. And all of these things must have been present and stable for an extended period of time, enough time to allow life to emerge. Europa seems to tick all these boxes, being nearly as old as Jupiter and the rest of the solar system, it's quite likely that this subsurface ocean environment has existed for as long as the Jovian satellites have been orbiting in a resonance. But what about the source of chemical compounds? Life on Earth is thought to have emerged in the form of single-celled organisms which extract energy from the minerals spewing up from the Earth's molten mantle through hydrothermal vents. 
These vents are caused when seawater seeps into the faults and cracks on the sea floor into areas where heat is welling up from the Earth's mantle. The heat bursts through and erupts like a mini volcano into the ocean, supercharging the water with nutrients and minerals. If the tidal heating on Europa is strong enough, then similar deep sea vents could have formed on its ocean floor. So there is a good chance that all three of these conditions have been met for billions of years, all the while protected from impacts and radiation from above by the giant ice barrier. Given the sheer volume, variety, diversity and resilience of life in Earth's oceans, it's no surprise that Europa has emerged as one of the most promising places in the solar system to search for signs of life beyond the Earth. It may be presumptuous to expect anything too complex, but there would have been plenty of time for things like microorganisms and bacteria to emerge. The most likely place life could exist in Europa's oceans is down in seafloor colonies around hydrothermal vents, should they exist on the Moon. Or it might exist just below the ocean floor, like endoliths do on the Earth. Alternatively, life could live and thrive near the surface, clinging onto the underside of the ice sheet, like many species of bacteria do on Earth near the poles. The freezing and thawing of its ice as it flexes could provide an energy source for life to emerge without the need for vents on the seafloor or photosynthesis from above. Or perhaps life may be closer to the surface than we yet realise. Evidence suggests that within this ice sheet, lakes of liquid water independent from the subsurface ocean flow completely encased and preserved. Given their proximity to the surface, these lakes are likely to be rich in hydrogen peroxide, which decays into oxygen, among other things, when exposed to liquid water. Near-surface, shallow lakes of oxygenated water could serve as an optimal environment for life to emerge, and a more accessible one for any mission to study it. Europa has plenty of potential for single-celled organisms, so much so that there is a case for the existence of more complex multicellular life. If the oxygen left over from the irradiation of the hydrogen peroxide on the surface can be transported down into the ocean via glacial processes, then some speculate that this would leave Europa's oceans as oxygenated as our own within a few million years, leaving plenty of time in the billions of years since for the emergence of more complex life. But with that said, much of the multicellular life on Earth depends on single-celled organisms, which source their energy through photosynthesis and add oxygen to the atmosphere. Because photosynthesis isn't a viable option on Europa, this could potentially place limits on the type and complexity of life which could evolve there. Some speculate that life could float freely in Europa's oceans, but given their depth and the lack of an energy source from the icy roof, it's unlikely that hydrothermal activity alone would be enough to sustain a full ocean biosphere. Furthermore, we were very excited to discover that Europa's oceans are probably salty, but just how salty they are could also limit the type of life which can thrive. An exceptionally salty ocean would mean only extremophile microbes would be able to survive, and nothing too complex. In any case, it's probably going to be a while before we can say for sure. There's a very reasonable case to be excited about the prospect of life on Europa, but in order to find proof, we will need to study the moon further. So with that in mind, when are we going back? Well, there have been plenty of missions planned, but finding life in an ocean 10 miles deep on the body of an airless moon covered in spikes half a billion kilometres away is a near impossible challenge, for our current technology at least. A more realistic option would be to survey the moon with sophisticated instruments to try and detect signs of life closer to the surface. As we know, it is possible that Europa is erupting plumes of water-rich material up to 150 kilometres into space, and so one hope is that we can fly a probe through one of these plumes to determine if the right chemical compounds are present in the ocean to support life as we know it, another way to determine Europa's potential for habitability. The original plan was to send a craft carrying instruments to image the surface in better detail to look for similar chemical signatures, and this was due to launch in the mid-2020s. But then, the mission got a big boost in funding after the United States National Research Council recommended a landing mission to Europa. A great outcome, but with one catch. The landing mission had a very optimistic due date of 2022. While this target probably won't be met, there are two other planned missions one by NASA and the other by the European Space Agency. Launching sooner is the ESA's mission, which will explore the Jovian satellites and will conduct two flybys of Europa in the process. 
This mission is called the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer and is due to launch in 2022. Then, by 2025, NASA hopes to launch their own dedicated Europa Clipper spacecraft, which will study the Moon in much greater detail than anything prior, conducting a series of 45 low-altitude flybys of the Moon as it orbits Jupiter. Among its complex moon surveying instruments is an ice penetrating radar which will broadcast at Europa and the kind of response it receives will help us to determine more of the ocean's features and characteristics. It also comes with a so-called plume hunter which it will use to detect and sample an eruption of seawater should they actually be occurring. The detailed imaging of the surface will also be used to assist in selecting a potential landing site for a future landing mission. No craft has ever landed on a Jovian moon like it has with Saturn's moon of Titan, but the most promising mission proposal yet is NASA's Europa Lander, a recent concept mission under study. But first, they will need to determine how they would land a probe on a terrain lined by jagged icy spikes. Once they've figured that out, finding evidence of ocean life will be an even trickier task. We do not currently possess the technology to get 100 kilometers down to the ocean floor to check for hydrothermal activity, However, a landing probe could search for life by other means. The presence, ratios and chirality of certain molecules could help us to identify traces or evidence of life processes. In the meantime, before these missions take to the skies, we will continue to observe and study Europa from Earth. As technology improves, we will be able to observe it in much better detail, and when the James Webb Telescope finally launches, it too will take a closer look at the European surface. All of this is at least a couple of years away, however, and so for now at least, a human colony like the ones depicted in the games that model Europa will remain in fiction. We are still a way off any groundbreaking discovery, but we still might be able to find evidence of life on Europa within your lifetime. Even if it is just single-celled organisms, that would still have massive implications for our study of life around the universe. If we were to find another independent source of life in the solar system, it would be reasonable to assume that life springs up frequently wherever the right conditions are met. Given that there are probably billions of habitable Earth-like planets out there, and billions more moons with similar habitable properties, life on Europa would mean that the Milky Way is likely to be teeming with life. From the simple stuff, perhaps right up to the complex stuff like you and I. And given the sheer size and inconceivable number of galaxies out there, imagine what else could exist. It was the Galilean moons which helped humanity to realise that the planets orbit the sun, fundamental insight into the mechanics of our solar system. And perhaps in the future we can go one better, and the moons can reveal to us something even more exciting. <laughs>